Hello, and welcome to the session on the three steps to create a hybrid cloud with Azure. My name is Sahil Bansal, and I work as a senior product marketing manager at Nutanix. In this session, we will talk about what are the benefits of adopting a hybrid cloud architecture, how Nutanix can help you easily build a hybrid cloud with Azure in just three steps, and how do you get started with using Nutanix? For those of you that might not be familiar with Nutanix, uh, Nutanix pioneered the space of hyperconverged infrastructure, which is a software-driven infrastructure solution that converges compute, storage, networking, and virtualization into one single solution. And the Nutanix Cloud Platform is built on this hyperconverged infrastructure, along with a bunch of other services that the Nutanix portfolio offers, uh, specifically around data center services, such as consolidating storage, networking, uh, disaster recovery solutions, uh, DevOps services, helping our uh, DevOps teams build cloud native apps, automate their application lifecycle management, uh, delivering database as a service, and desktop services, helping you with your VDI and digital workspace needs. This Nutanix Cloud Platform helps our customers modernize their data centers from legacy three-tier architecture to HCI-based architecture, where uh, it runs on any of these OEM uh, vendors and OEM partners that we work with on their underlying hardware servers. To build a private cloud-like experience in your on-prem data center, but also extending that seamlessly from private to public clouds to hyperscalers like Azure and others, along with also running on the Nutanix cloud or service provider clouds. So that's what the Nutanix cloud platform delivers for you. One platform helping you run any app anywhere. So why are we talking about hybrid clouds? Well, we know that private clouds have their own benefits. Uh, there are certain legacy applications that might not be suitable, that might not be easy to migrate out of private clouds. And you have more control over your consumption because of more governance layers in your private environment, helping you keep uh, more control over your costs. And there might be some applications that you cannot move out of your geography because of regulatory concerns. You might have to keep them in your on-prem environment. And so, you know, there are these various benefits, which is why data centers are not going away anywhere anytime soon. But along with that, public clouds have their own benefits too. They help you with rapid time to market, deploying quickly with uh, ease of use, agility, and elasticity, as well as switching from a CapEx to an OpEx model so that you're truly paying only for what you consume and making the um, management of low-level infrastructure completely invisible to the end user. But what we really hear from our enterprise customers is, and not just enterprises, but across industry segments, is that they're, while they're already using uh, private clouds and multiple public clouds, what they truly need is not to operate these in siloed separate environments, but to have a seamless experience that connects their on-prem environment to all the public clouds that they use for a seamless hybrid cloud experience so that they can choose the most optimal cloud environment for their respective apps and workloads. But building such a hybrid cloud is not easy. Otherwise, we probably wouldn't be having this session. There are obviously key challenges around, you know, uh, ensuring workload portability across different environments, across your data center and public clouds, and making sure that your networking challenges are overcome, not just between data center and a public cloud, but across multiple public clouds. So that, you know, you are truly delivering this as a seamless unified experience without having your infrastructure management team operating in completely different silos, which can obviously be inefficient. And without adequate governance layers, without adequate uh, controls, um, your costs can quickly go out of hand as you move from an on-prem to a hybrid cloud environment. So those are the three key challenges that we hear from our customers uh, in terms of when they are building a hybrid cloud. And so what is needed from a hybrid cloud solution or hybrid cloud platform? First thing is a single platform that connects on-prem and public clouds with consistent experience, consistent skill sets and constructs that you can use in both private and public clouds. And it should also help with seamless migration 
and elasticity from on-prem to public clouds. That's the benefit. That's one of the main key benefits of a hybrid experience is that you are able to migrate from on-prem to public clouds. Um, let's say when you might want to benefit from the public cloud elasticity and delivering that in a way so that you are able to integrate natively with public cloud services requires integration requires networking integration uh, that should be built into your solution and not have you uh, manage networking overlays. And lastly, in order to deliver true freedom from lock-in, uh, we believe that such a solution should not only decouple your apps and workloads at the technology layer from the underlying platform, but it should also decouple at the business layer by helping your existing investments, your licenses, move with their workloads when your workloads have to migrate from one cloud to another. So license portability, native integration, uh, seamless migration, and a unified experience across private and public clouds is what delivers a seamless hybrid experience. And that's what we aim to deliver with our solution called Nutanix Clusters, which powers our underlying hybrid cloud infrastructure connecting Nutanix on-prem to the public clouds that we support and helping our customers run the Nutanix cloud platform on either on-prem or in public clouds with a unified management experience across all of their environments where Nutanix is running. That's what we mean when we say um, Nutanix clusters delivers the hybrid cloud architecture that spans private and public clouds, but helps you operate this as a unified hybrid cloud. And so, Nutanix Clusters uh, is coming very soon on Azure. For those of you that might have missed our announcement, uh, we announced a couple of weeks ago that Nutanix and Microsoft are working together to deliver hybrid cloud solutions, a big part of which is the um, hybrid cloud infrastructure powered by Nutanix Clusters running on Azure, which is expected to be in public preview by the end of this calendar year 2020. Um, and the key components of the solution are the necessary networking integration has been built into the solution so that you don't have to manage any networking overlay complexity. You will are seamlessly able to connect your on-prem environment to public clouds like Azure, getting direct access to Azure services uh, without any networking overlays. You're able to use your existing Azure accounts, your existing Azure networking setup, including VNets, subnets, uh, if you have any existing direct uh, connects, you're also able to use those, making it very quick and easy for you to get started with. And for our Nutanix on-prem customers, you're able to use your Nutanix existing licenses, um, migrate them from on-prem to Azure. And talking about migration, Nutanix clusters truly delivers a lift and shift experience. No retooling, no refactoring, no code changes needed. Take your apps and workloads as they exist today and seamlessly migrate them across clouds, while at the same time delivering the same level of performance as if your apps and workloads were running in your data center, but now running in Azure. So you get, uh, you get seamless migration, access to Azure native services without having to manage any networking overlay complexity, and you're able to maintain the same level of performance as if these were running in your data center. So we talked about the three steps to build a hybrid cloud with Nutanix and Azure. Let's take a look at what those three steps are. Step one is provisioning and setting up your networking. So we mentioned that you know uh, the solution packages in the necessary networking integration. And what that means is you're able to use the VMs that are running on Nutanix. They're able to use the same IP addresses from the uh, IP address space that's native to Azure. So to Azure services, it appears that these VMs that are running on Nutanix, they're just any other Azure VMs and you get direct access to these Azure services while also being able to seamlessly migrate them from Nutanix on-prem to Nutanix public clouds. Let's take a look at what this uh, provisioning and networking setup looks like. Once Nutanix clusters on Azure is in public preview, you will be able to access it from the Azure marketplace. We'll go ahead and start the setup from marketplace, which will take us into the clusters portal where we specify the details of our Azure account and a app registration that we will create for clusters, which will allow us to manage the Azure Nutanix ready nodes. We will also select the regions, the Azure regions where we want to deploy Nutanix. And that's it. This is now going to configure the Azure account to run in our Nutanix clusters portal. The next step is to actually go ahead and create the cluster. Here we select the Azure account, the region, 
the resource groups, as well as the uh, existing VNets and subnets have all been automatically discovered. Now we uh, select the host type, the number of hosts in the cluster, and that's it. Just review every, that everything looks good, and we start to create the cluster. A Nutanix cluster typically takes about 45 minutes to get deployed on the Azure Nutanix ready nodes. Once the cluster is up and running, we will be able to access it and start deploying VMs on that cluster. Checking out the Azure VNet that we use, here we see that the IP address space belongs in the, in the address range 10.60, which is the same address space that we can use for VMs running on Nutanix. This is now the Nutanix management plane where we have VMs running on Nutanix with the same IP addresses starting with 10.60 as the address space from the Azure VNet, meaning that these VMs appear as if they are native to Azure, uh, to the Azure services, giving direct access to those services. All right, now that we've provisioned Nutanix clusters on Azure, the next step is to unify Nutanix running on Azure with Nutanix running on-prem. We do this in a couple of different ways, uh, delivering a unified management experience for our existing Nutanix on-prem customers with our management plane called Prism, which delivers all of the necessary operational practices, tooling, uh, keeping the same consistent operations across Nutanix on-prem, as well as Nutanix in public cloud, making this the one place to manage all of your Nutanix clusters, no matter where they are running on-prem, in Azure or in other public clouds that we support. But along with it, we are also integrating with Azure Arc to allow Azure customers to use Arc to manage their Kubernetes containers, data services, and servers running in, in Azure or on Nutanix, no matter where Nutanix runs, whether that's Nutanix on Azure or Nutanix on-prem or Nutanix in other public clouds. Let's take a look at what that looks like. Once a Nutanix cluster is up and running, we can log into our infrastructure management plane, which is called Prism. Here you see that this is a Nutanix cluster running on Azure nodes, and we can configure this with any other Nutanix on-prem cluster, truly establishing a hybrid environment between on-prem and public clouds. Uh, you see these are now Nutanix clusters running in multiple different locations, on-prem, on Azure, or other public clouds. This truly unifies your infrastructure um, management experience and delivers a hybrid environment. Along with this, we have an integration with Azure Arc, which allows you to manage your Kubernetes clusters. For example, here we see we have some um, worker nodes running on Nutanix. And if we log into Azure Arc in our Azure account, we are able to see the same Kubernetes clusters in Azure that are now running on Nutanix. For example, I might want to monitor the health of these clusters uh, through Azure Arc, whether those are my Kubernetes clusters running on Azure Native or in the hybrid environment on Nutanix, on Azure. All right, now that we've deployed Nutanix on Azure, unified it with our on-prem environments, the next step is migrating workloads. So Nutanix truly delivers a seamless lift and shift experience from on-prem to public clouds like Azure, so that you know you can set up data protection policies, uh, you can easily burst into Azure when you want to add more resources without having to expand your data center footprint. Let's take a look at what that looks like. Let's say we have an e-commerce application that is running on a Nutanix on-prem cluster. We see the IP address of this app is 10.42.102. We want to create a scenario where this app um, migrates over to Azure in the case of a DR event. We will do that through our Prism Central management plane, where we can create the scenarios of what should happen in the case of a DR event using something called a recovery plan. Here we specify our recovery location as the Azure region. Uh, we specify the VMs and the order in which those VMs should power up in the case of a DR scenario. And we map the networking between our Nutanix on-prem environment and the Azure cluster. Let's go ahead and simulate a uh, failover scenario to see how this works. Uh, we'll go into the recovery plan and trigger a failover. Uh, we see that we specified our Azure cluster as the recovery site. A failover has been triggered, and we see that our app is no longer working on the on-prem IP, but it is now accessible on Azure. The app is up and running. VMs migrated over to Azure. 
Now, let's say uh, if we have, if we are running a lot of VMs on our Azure cluster, we power on a bunch of different VMs and we start to run into resource constraint capacity. Maybe we are hitting CPU and memory limitations. We can easily expand the capacity of this cluster by going into the clusters portal and going into the uh, capacity tab over here and easily adding more number of hosts uh, to provision more uh, resources for it. This is currently manual, but this can also be automated using an automation script, giving you the ability to automatically burst into public cloud when you start to hit resource capacity. All right, so to summarize, the key hybrid cloud use cases that we see are lifting and shifting apps from your on-prem environment to public clouds like Azure without any retooling, without any code changes. Or maybe you don't want to migrate your apps, you want to keep it on-prem, but you want to benefit from the elasticity of public clouds. And Nutanix Clusters helps you build that bridge between on-prem and public clouds and helps you automate the uh, burstability of uh, additional resources into public clouds. Another key use case that we see is around business continuity using public clouds as a backup site, as a, as a DR site, instead of having to manage a secondary data center. And lastly, maybe you want to use some specialized Azure services, some uh, public cloud services with your on-prem legacy apps. So Nutanix Clusters is helping you build that connectivity, the bridge between on-prem to public clouds for these four main use cases that we see amongst our customers. Along with it, so when, when the solution is available for a public preview, which we anticipate by the end of calendar year 2020, um, how you would get started is through the Azure Marketplace. And because you'll be able to procure uh, Nutanix clusters from the Azure Marketplace, you will be able to use your existing Mac commitments and they will count towards both the Nutanix software license costs as well as the Azure nodes where the Nutanix software will be running. So no new financial commitments needed. Use your existing Azure Mac as well as get the uh, extended security updates benefits and discounting um, benefits for your, let's say your Windows Server licenses uh, with the Azure hybrid benefits. And I mentioned license uh, portability, so that is a key part of our solution. Um, we help you with granular consumption and you can also pay for the Nutanix licenses in a pay as you go fashion as you build and grow. But at the same time, you can also, if you have existing Nutanix uh, licenses in your on-prem environments, you are able to seamless, seamlessly migrate that and use your existing licenses in Nutanix clusters on Azure. All right, to summarize, what are the main benefits for you? Seamless mobility across on-prem and public clouds, um, no code change migration, no retooling, no re-architecting, a truly unified infrastructure management experience, improving your efficiency of your infrastructure management, as well as with license portability and being able to use our existing Mac commitments, it helps you lower your overall operational costs. So um, what are the next steps for you today? As I mentioned, Nutanix clusters on Azure is coming very soon, expected by the end of this calendar year, but it is available on other public clouds. As well as at the same time, you can check out the Nutanix private cloud solution, our HCI offering by taking the test drive. Our test drive helps you understand the Nutanix platform without any hardware needed, uh, any setup, no cost to you. You can just run it in your own browser. If you'd like to, like to be notified when Nutanix clusters is available for Azure, we encourage you to sign up for our waitlist by visiting Nutanix.com slash Microsoft. That's all that we have today. We hope you enjoyed this session and learned something new about Nutanix and Azure, and we look forward to connecting with you throughout the rest of Microsoft Ignite. Have a great day.